Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the PGA Century uh, Tournament, which is kicking off the 2024 PGA DFS season. Um, and in keeping with my new uh, dedication to making sure that every video I do teaches you something, and it focuses on process and things like that, um, we're going to have that apply to to golf as well. And what's interesting to me about the PGA DFS golf streets is, I don't know, like when, when you, when you watch other content, I'm, I get a little confused because on the one hand, it's a very data driven sport when it comes to doing analysis, um, all kinds of statistics regarding you know, shots, gains, shots, lost, different course fits, um, odds relative to salaries and things like that. And then when you actually listen to content, about 95% of it is geared towards weird narratives or, or like weird gut feel type things. And it's kind of confusing. I guess it's just because you have to, um, I guess, fill an hour with with content that you can't just say, well, according to the model, this guy looks really good. So he's a good price and you should play him. Instead, you get into all this stuff. Four years ago, the guy got third here. This guy just, this is not the kind of guy I want to play. And this guy's mad at this. This guy's motivated. This guy's coming off of this, that, and the other thing. And it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if the people that the experts that do content actually play that way. Um, in that case, it would be very disingenuous um, or they're just kind of filling up that hour for some reason with this, all this talk about that really have nothing to do with the stats and nothing to do with the models, which for my money are really good. Um, I was listening to one of the podcasts yesterday and, you know, people come in a little differently on this, I guess. But the, the, the argument I heard was that, well, projections just don't matter in golf. It's just everything is so random that, you know, it's just kind of silly to just kind of rely on them, as opposed to, say, the NBA, where we always should. Um, I, think, I think that's just not accurate. I, I don't know. I mean, I've been playing golf a while now. And I have to say that these – that these models that lead the field to some of these plays that you wouldn't think would be really popular in which is staring at it, it they've been really, really successful. Now, again, I, I don't have the data in front of me. I'm just kind of guessing, but I just have this, I just feel as though these 30% owned 8K guys or these 28% owned $7,600 guys that just profile so well they just always do seem to get there. And maybe that's just an illusion. It's always possible. But I happen to think that the models are, are, are really, really strong. And I happen to believe that the projections are really, really strong. And, and part of it is because, well, not because of it is, you know, I, I look at projections and models from all over the place. And the, the difference between one to the other is not all that big, you know? Um, and if that's if that's the case, um, how is it that random? Now, okay, there there are things you can say, right? So, the, the standard deviation of returns from these projections are might be might be wider than other sports, for example, just because of the way results distribute things like that. But it's not as if there's a lot of correlation involved that you have to worry about. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could you could get deep into the weeds with the, with the waves and stuff like that, especially with showdown about if, if one group is facing a certain type of weather, you want to play that, you know, it's really good. You'll play the same golfers in that group and you want to fade golfers in another group. But that type of stuff to me is all going to be kind of con countered by ownership anyway. So for my money, PGA, it really is the simplest sport to play as far as DFS goes. And I'd love to make it harder than it is. 
And I'd love to make it all about the narratives and say, oh my God, XYZ he's never won in Japan or, or, I mean, drive me bananas. But it really is about getting good projections and then using good lineup construction techniques to build good lineups. And I think that if you use the tools that, that at least I use, you're going to put yourself in a good position. So, so let's, let's do a check mark here. Um, am I even sharing my screen? I am sharing my screen. So this is Saberson. So we're already skipping to the, to the, to the line of construction piece. Okay. But the first thing you need is a good set of projections. A and I did, all this back testing of all the different sites and all the different whatevers and, and every different combination of whatever. And the, the, the projections that I put out are, I think a pretty neat uh, weighted, weighted uh, aggregate of the, of the industry. And, and what I did for most of the sites, not all of them, cause it's just some of them are new is that I back tested a lot of this stuff and, 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 and I overweighted certain sites based on accuracy in certain spots. And this took a lot of work. Um, and so when I come up with say uh, ownership, that, 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 that is not my projection of ownership. It really is my statistical and mathematical interpretation of the industries that um, based on my work, analyzing their predictions and results over a period of time. Um, the people sometimes ask like who's incorporated within, within here. I mean, sometimes I'll use six, six, sometimes I'll use nine. Sometimes I will like look at a, at a site and I think they'll be, they're just kind of out to lunch. And sometimes they like that. They'll, they'll, you'll see this one. If you, if you follow projections, sometimes you'll see one site that's really, really well-respected. They just lose their minds. You know, they'll, they'll be like bad inputs. They'll be bad, whatever. It's just because they're human. And I'll just basically toss those out. So I don't want to say who I use and, and, and who I leave out and stuff like that, because it does require, you know, me to make some judgment along the way. Um, and the projections, again, they're based on a combination of all these models that are out there, which are really, really good. Okay. Um, so. This is the, the first step is getting yourself a good set of projections. And this is available on TrueDFS. This is, again, this is what I used myself. And uh, I just started loading them on here. I think you can only get them if you're premium now. Um, in any case, um, and the way I list them is here, straight fantasy points, fine. But you could sort in any way you want. This is your traditional points per dollar. And here is your what's called sheets value score, which is my kind of formula that I use in different sports that, that, that um, factors in both point per dollar and raw fantasy points. And then you can also sort by, by ownership or projected ownership. Um, so every single slate, I really do the same. All of the work, well, not all the work. Most of the work is done by other people. Most of the work is done by people that make these models. And then it's by me, by researching which ones to use in certain situations, right? That's really important. Um, and then it's a question of, of how you want to build. So we're now at the stage where um, we're in the sim wars. And, and since the, you know, the sims have only been around for like several months now. And there are some competitors. There are all kinds of other sites besides SaberSim, others that are getting into this contest in mode where it puts a big premium on your ability to calculate ownership and figure out what the field is going to do. Um, because again, what contest sims do is it, it, it takes your pool of lineups, it compares them to a field of lineups and figures out what where you could best get leverage against that field. Okay. That's why, you know, that, that when DraftKings got into trouble or FanDuel, I forget, I forget where those DraftKings or FanDuel, but one of them got into huge trouble several years ago because uh, the ownership was leaked and people who worked for the company were, you know, knew what the ownership was before they put their lineups in. You know, and that's why that was such a big deal. I mean, you, because you have such an edge if you know what the field is actually going to do. Um, you can figure out exactly where you want to get leverage. So, the, I will say that the 
this field, this sim field is, is very new. And it's very sketchy. I say sketchy kind of in a mathematical way. Like it's not been solved, like not even remotely. There are several different sim products that will take the same data and come up with completely different results. So if that's the case, I mean, then, then obviously it's not been solved yet, right? You have the same inputs and you know the same thing that you're trying to accomplish. You think that people would be close, okay? Um, so there, everybody's working on this. And I do know that five, five years from now or whatever, it's going to be better than it is now, but it's better than nothing. So when I go through this, I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to, I'm going to go the old fashioned way. I'm going to look at hand builds just to see. Okay? Um, and then we're going to use SaberSim to build these lineups. And we're going to look at them from a lot of different, uh, a lot of different views. Okay. Whether it be from projections, whether it be uh, projected points to, Saber, Saber score to contest sim to derived uh, rankings, this, that, and the other. Right? And we're going to use, listen, we're going to use this uh, this slate as an example, but I'm really hoping that you go back to this video um, for other slates. You know what I mean? Like when I do these videos, it's so that you don't have to come back to these every week. I'm going to go over the plays for this week just because, you know, that it's better to have some context of what I'm talking about. But I really hope that this is more of an instruction on how I play, what 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 to look for. Okay, so first of all, one thing unique about this slate is that when you when you sort by sheet, sheets value score, almost all the time you have the top rated sheets value score guys being the higher priced guys. Okay, and when you have a a, a, a slate like this, you don't see that and. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is in a no cut event, you're always going to see the best point per dollar plays and even the best sheet value score plays as being from the low salary play, uh, golfers, because these low salary golfers, you know, they, they run a pretty significant risk of missing a cut in your trip, in your traditional cut events. Um, but when you're guaranteed four rounds, you're naturally going to have a higher point per dollar uh, projection. Okay, so that's why when you sort these by sheet value score, you're, you're typically seeing these guys. Now, what, what, what that means is that it's not as easy in a no-cut event to build hand-built lineups because normally what you do in hand builds is you could you would see like some 10Ks up here, 8Ks. And you could just kind of like take the top guys rated by sheets value score and just kind of fill them in and do whatever. But you won't be able to do that here because you're, you're going to be costing yourself too many raw points. You know, just because these guys are that top sheets value score doesn't mean they're, you're, that your lineup of the top six of these is going to be the is going to be the um, the top producer. OK. Um, but what you can do from a handbook perspective is make certain determinations like. When you sort these things by, say, by anything, but let's say by point per dollar, what you're going to be looking for are the highest price guys that are good point per dollar plays. Okay. So you're looking at, so your top point per dollar play of the, of the high price guys is going to be Colin Morikawa. So he is going to rate to be the best overall play. OK, if you built your, your your top six lineups this way. So like for I'm going to go ahead and do this. OK, so for example. OK, let's um, let's get golf up here. If I were going ahead and do this. And these are all old. I'm going to redo everything right now. You start off with, say, Colin Morikawa. Oops. And then you have 8180 per man. So you could you could spend up again at least once. So again, you're gonna look for another kind of higher price guy. So Sun J M at 8100. Put him in. And we're still at 8200 a man, you know. So so you see that you have to kind of just just play the high priced guys up here. So then like he said Sun JM, you might not have even to go to him, but Ludwig Aberg, or Aberg, however you pronounce it, okay, at 8,700. Strong play. 
and now we're at 8K a man. And now you can make some decision. Like if you want, you can then play, you know, you, you want to spend all the way up. You'll go to probably maybe Victor Hovland at 10.5 and see if you can afford that. So if you did that, then you're at 6,800 a man, and then you can come back and you can grab some of these guys like Pop Baccio, very, you know, strongest point per dollar play on the board. It wouldn't be so bad to play him. So if you play Baccia, and then 7,400 left, play Cam Davis or something like that. Okay. Or Eric Cole. Play Cam Davis, why not? So this is the way you could use my sheets to just hand build, okay? But when you do this, I promise you, uh, not always, but 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 a lot of the time, you're going to get high-owned golfers. And the reason for that is that the best projected guys, the guys that look the best in my models, the guys that look the best in the sheets, are almost always going to be the guys that people play the most. And that's just the way it is. Um, so now we have to get into, you know, what type of tournament you're playing. You know, what are you looking to accomplish? If you're playing single entry, or where there are, you know, not that many players uh, entrants, you can play this way and play these types of golfers and, and you can be, you know, in pretty good shape. And don't worry about ownership all that much in those types of contests. However, if you're going to, you know, try to win the 200,000 or whatever it is, you just have to get a little bit more unique or a lot more unique. Question is, how much more unique? Well, that's where Saber Sim and these lineup builders and these contests and things kind of come into play okay so let's um let's get right into doing that before i do that let's just we may as well take a look and see who rate, rated to be the highest on guys uh morikawa aberg scheffler hobland henley 7700 he's the well henry and cam davis and eric cole these look to be the three highest owned you know cheapos so I really just laid out the real question, right? Like how unique do you have to get, do you have to be? Like, what do you have to accomplish, you know, to play these, you know, play that, that big, the big, uh, the big GPP. So why don't we just start doing this? Let's upload. These were old projections. So this all doesn't matter. So let's upload, say the, um, the projections and you can do this however you want into Saberson, and let's just start running lineups, okay? Now, before we do that, I want to say that I don't make any changes pre-built. Uh, again, I, I believe that the models are good. I believe that the algorithms are good. Um, and so if, if I get like a bunch of a guy that doesn't feel good, I don't care. Um, I'm going to make my adjustments for ownership using the contest sims, Um and I'm not worried too much about anything else. Like if I get 30 golfers, fine. If I get 50, fine. I I'm not going to just override the math when it comes to golf. I'm just not doing it. So let's build 150 lineups. Now, one of the things that you'll see, I already added in the contest sim settings. Um, I, I uh, Like you see... If you go into contests, it'll you'll be able to right click it and add these. I don't want to do it again, but again, what this is trying to accomplish, right, is when we run our contest sim, it has to figure out, you know, it's got to assume how many people are in this contest, what type of what percentage the first and whatever, so we can make a guesstimate as to what the field is going to play. Now the one thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to uh, using SaberSense specifically is that the default is that you are using the SaberSim ownership for your contest sims. Um, so what that means is that your custom ownership, if you have any, is not being factored in specifically for the purpose of the contest sims. So you have to make peace with that 
if you are going to do this. Now, fortunately, uh, I mean, you go through it. When there are some real big, big discrepancies, what is this Terrell Hatton ownership projection? They have him at 31. And, and my work has him at 11. But again, all this is going to change. You know, so I'm going to redo these projections, but this is this is something that I look at. Um, Terrell Hatton. See, they just changed this projection. I don't get that at all. I, I think 11 is a little bit better. Very curious. But we'll have to take a look at that that Hatton one in a little bit. Very interesting. Let me see something. I want to see all this running. So this is like stuff I do sort of behind the scenes. I just kind of like monitor these projections and see, and I just check for outliers, you know, and I'll probably just toss like real big outliers. Projection. Um, see Hatton. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, well, they have Scheffler. They like changed all these. Is that is that the story? I think they just did a new run. Okay, so we'll 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 fix all this. But this is this is the process, right? So then we have this, and this is your, your 150. And this is by exposure with 70% Morikawa, 66% Scheffler, uh, and you see it all here. So this is to me the beginning. You know, this is the minimum you can do. First thing you have to look at is what is how is this being ranked? You know, we built 5,000 lineups. This is the top 150 based on what? It's based on, it looks like, Sabre score golf main. So this is the default kind of high upside lineup build. And you could click through this, the eye, and see what this is. Um, average adjusted own. So this is somewhat aggressive, right? So this is not bad. So if you want, I mean, you you could just kind of roll with this as a, as a 150 set. I think it's reasonable. But there are certain things you could tweak. Like, for example, like if you didn't like that you were getting 73% more power or whatever, you could like manually, you know, just give yourself less by clicking in, you know, here, just put it less and it'll automatically reduce it for you. That that's kind of asking for trouble. What you could do is is change this uniques from min unique one to min unique two, for example, and then you see you get a little less of everybody and a little more of the guys from underneath. Or you can even go unique min uniques three. Now again, you see what you're doing here, right? You're by definition giving yourself the lower, not the lower, but not the top one hundred and fifty scoring lineups anymore, even by saber score, right? You're getting the top 150 by Sabre score, which gives you three uniques. So it's different. Okay. So this is one thing you can do is you can stop here, kind of right off of the bat. Now here, here's another weird, like they're, they're, they're putting Mark Howitt 16%. He thinks he's got to be higher. But again, you know, these, these are the things that, you know, I, when I go into my, my own, the own projection stuff, I'll come up with something solid you know, by the end of the, you know, by tonight. So you could just go with this. I think this makes a lot of sense. But but now what we should do is run these contests. Now, again, it's it's a little bit, I don't say dangerous, but but what you're doing here is you are now giving, you're now giving something up, but getting something back. So what you're getting back is you're getting this kind of tailor-made 
um, uh, process, I guess, where they're now ranking your lineups against the actual tournaments that you're playing. Okay. Um, and that would be like for me, the, the, the tee off, which is the, which, which is the, the MME and, and the big buy. Okay. But what it's doing again, it's using the Saber Sim ownership projections, not the custom ones. So that's something that gives back a little bit. Okay. Is it worth it? I don't know. I'm just not sure. Um, so let's uh, now rate, rate these 5,000 lineups by risk adjusted ROI as applied to this MME, this, this season TR, and see how things change. So now we'd be getting, oh, it's not that bad, so 42% Morikawa, and we get a little bit less of everybody. So that's that's fine, okay? Um, now, again, one of the reasons we're getting this is, again, you see it says adjusted, it says the, the, the ownership of Colin Morikawa is 16%. So that's why you're getting so much of him is because they think that only 16% of the people are going to play him. Um, so if you do this, you know, you're making that presumption. However, before we even got into this mess by using the contest sims, our Sabre score rankings even had more Colin Morico. So I'm kind of cool with this. Um, and then for me, I just fire it away. You know, I just, just literally... I, I don't, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but I don't go through individually and say, Ooh, do I really want this guy? Do I really want this guy that much? Um, in golf. I mean, I might do that in other sports. Maybe I'm wrong for doing it in other sports as well, but um, in golf, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play that game. We're going to, uh, we've selected the risk adjusted ROI for each of these contests, put them in. Now we're going to download this, it automatically puts up here. And then we just fire it away. And fortunately or unfortunately, that's my process. It's very rare I deviate from it. A lot of the work, most of the work is done in the projection phase and in you know, those little tweaks. Like I'll do like min unique three or min unique four if I feel like crunching it that way, you know. Aside from that, I am rely, I do rely on the models quite. Um, and I, listen, the, these lineups are not even going to remotely resemble what's later because I have to do a lot of work on these projections. But that's uh, pretty much what I got for you guys. Uh, welcome you to join me on this tour of PGA DFS, which is not easy. And uh, yeah, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.